Welcome. I'm uh, Ralph Tolomeo. I'm with the Environmental Commission. This is a co-sponsored event with the Environmental Commission of the Township. This is a priority, and we thank you all for coming. Uh, there's literature here about events that our joint economic, uh, <laughs> environmental commissions are holding. If you want the literature on the water talk, that's next Wednesday, next Monday, I'm sorry, the 15th here. And we also have a paper shredding event going on in the township. Saturday the 13th, multitude of other things coming to the literature, be our guests. Okay. The trees have already been cut, is the way I phrase it. We're here to talk about Elko, and I just want you to know that Deputy Mayor John Radowski has taken the lead on this, and he and I think most of us consider it a, a, the highest priority that could affect this part of the world that's uh, yes. happened in a long time. So we're very active, very interested. OA is here, Clean Air Council is here, Delaware River Keeper is here. I'm going to turn it over to John. Thank you, Ralph. And thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. Um, couldn't think of a better reason to be together, to ed educate everyone, and, and to share our thoughts on this, on this project, this proposed facility right across the river. I um, would first like to thank the mayor of Bordentown Township, mayor of Bordentown City. Uh, we've got a representative from Pendell, Mr. John Stratz is here tonight. We've got um, Assembly uh, Conaway's representative here as well. Um, if I missed any other officials, please let me know. Oh, Deputy Mayor uh, Eugene Fusi from the township as well. Um, as you can see that we've got, we all in this region understand that this is an important, important priority and we, it's something that came about a few years ago and it's sort of flown under the radar until recently. So we figured that this is a great time to bring it back up to speed and really uh, continue educating the public about where we can take it from here. Uh, before I go any further, um, Mayor Lynch, if you'd like to say a couple words. Thank you, John, and uh, good, evening, good evening, everyone, and thank you all for coming tonight. And uh, we'd like to thank the Deputy Mayor for, as Ralph said, taking the lead in this. The Environmental Commission is both uh, uh, working with us in this very important project uh, going forward. Here we go again with Pennsylvania. This is not the first time we've been in battle with this uh, situation, but this is probably the most serious. Anybody who's lived here in the last 40 or 50 years can tell you that going from the Yacht Club with the boats up to the houses that turn red because of iron oxide uh, oxidation on your houses that you had to wash off every morning to a gritty like a sooty steel substance that that blanketed this town and, and other towns along the river so we're not we're not this is not new for us but this is probably as the last administration mayor malone and myself had had talked before the last election that as as the committee chairman has stated tonight this is not without question this is the single most important issue the Bordentown City Township and the river towns along the river are going to experience probably in the next 20 or 30 years. This has to be handled the right way. I, I applaud the, uh, the team that the mayor put together before I became mayor. We do have a committee that's working diligently on this. Experts, uh, they're on the radar, a little bit below the radar, but trust me when I tell you, they, they're doing their homework and they met tonight in the Dr. Nichols house. So we thank you for for all that you're doing up to this point. Uh, with, with that, uh, I'm, I'm as excited to hear about tonight as I can. I will tell you from the Bordentown City standpoint, we are committed to fighting this and we will do whatever we can do in a, in a rightful and honest way to make sure that this doesn't happen. And with that, I'd like to talk, turn to Mayor Bennett, which would like to say a few words as well. And we thank him for coming into town as well. Welcome everybody, thank you for coming out. I was getting a little scared at first. I got here early and I didn't see too many chairs filled, but then I, I had a bright smile on my face. Standing room only, and that's what we need. Again, people think that this particular project went away. Uh, I was involved with, with, with this in 2014 when I was mayor. I can remember going to Pennsylvania, across the river, talking to the people there and everything else. And th there's a couple things that, that really come to mind here. Number one, uh, as Mayor Lynch said before and everybody's saying right now, 
this probably is the most dangerous thing that can happen to us in, a, in probably 20 years, 30 years, whatever. We have other environmental issues like the pipeline and compressor, but this is even more important. And again, don't fool yourself. Everybody's saying, okay, we're right across the river from this, and the air pollution with the westerly, prevailing westerly winds is going to affect us more than it will Pennsylvania. That is true. But quite frankly, I'm more concerned about the water. Why I say this, approximately, and I use the word approximately, <clears throat> 8 million people are affected because they use the Delaware River for water supply. And that goes from Philadelphia and probably south all the way up to Trenton, probably north. Again, we cannot allow this to happen in our own backyard. Now, what, what I would suggest, and it was suggested to me before that, uh, again, I've said the same thing, I should say, too, since 2014, word consortium. We need to pool our resources with other riverfront communities, with both states. And remember something, when I say cities, that's Philadelphia and Trenton. That's big time, all right? We, we should be able to pool our resources and have enough money legally to fight this abomination. And I say that because of the drinking water. Again, Elcon chose this site. God knows why. Because when I asked in 2014, two things. This company came out of Israel. And I said, you know, give me the information. The information being, how's it doing in Israel? Never got that information. I've heard other things since, but whatever. The, the other part to this, why would you want to put this type of facility right next to a water supply for over 8 million people? I checked out, there's either three or four other types of pro projects like this. Again, thermal oxidation. Other people like to say incinerator, it makes no difference. Uh, but the point is, we have three or four. And where are they located? They're located out west, not near any water supply, not near population centers. God, why did you want to put this over here? Again, we will join this fight with Bordentown City, and we will do whatever we can to make sure that this project does not get completed. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Lynch and Mayor Benowitz. Um, so just to build off of what Mayor Benowitz was just speaking about, why did they choose this site? As, as you can see from this map, it's, a, it's taken right from, from Google Maps. Um, oftentimes when you talk about things across the river in Pennsylvania, it seems like it may not be that close to us on the New Jersey side. The pin on the image is where the Elcon site, the proposed Elcon site, will be built. It's about two and a half miles from where you're seated right now. So this facility is actually located on the Keystone Industrial Port Complex. Now, that jargon sounds, uh, you know, complicated, but really that's where the U.S. Steel facility used to be located. Um, it's a massive site. If you could go back one more, one more time. The, uh, as you can see, it basically stretches from Trenton down past Fieldsboro, it's basically the size of Bordentown Township and Bordentown City and parts of Hamilton combined. Um, next slide, please. So in the 1940s, it was purchased by U.S. Steel. And in 1952, the steel production facility really went into full operation and continued expanding up until 1991. It was at that point when it really started um, contracting and a lot of the facilities shut down and, and they decided to move their, their facilities elsewhere. Um, in 1993, the U.S., uh, the United States EPA um, and the U.S. Steel entered into a consent order to clean up the entire site. After the decades of steel manufacturing over there, uh, the entire island basically was deemed a brownfield site. So at that moment, the, it was a public-private partnership to really work to clean up the site and, and to make it work for uh, more modern uh, facilities. So by 2001, the majority of the steel operations have shut down. Um, for those of you who lived in this area probably realized that you were no longer getting that rusty dust on your car in the morning. Um, you didn't see the smokestacks billowing smoke as much. Uh, and that's because 
it basically shut down. Uh, and in 2005, Pennsylvania designated the entire Keystone Industrial Complex um, as a Keystone Opportunity Improvement Zone, which this is to help transform this brownfield site into a usable property. So through this designation, the, the parcels on this site were basically exempt from uh, property taxes, state sales, corporate taxes, um, and the enterprise zone for, for planning area was another designation which allowed for low interest financing for developers who wanted to do something for the site. So it was a very ambitious pr um, program by Pennsylvania to try to make something out of this once unusable site. So I, I applaud Pennsylvania for taking that initiative. And with, with their um, efforts, it's a little tough to read, but there are, there are over 50 different companies and operations now on that on that site. Most of them are involved in heavy industrial manufacturing. So this is a case where, yes, Elcon is a threat, absolutely, that's why we're here tonight. Um, but it's building on a site that is already littered with heavy industry, as well as very large landfill and other uh, waste uh, management um, sites that take care of a lot of this industrial waste. So, thank you. So, as stated by the Keystone Industrial Port Complex's website in and of itself, um, it is the objective of the USS Corporation and specifically the USS Real Estate to redevelop the USS Fairless Works from a large single user site, which was US Steel, um, to basically a multi user heavy industrial center. And that's what's happening now, that's what's been happening. So, when we talk about Elcon and we talk about what's going on over there, it's not just Elcon itself. It is the cumulative impact of multiple individual heavy industry manufacturers. According to um, the, a spokesman for Elcon back in 2016, he stated that the facility will primarily treat wastewater within the tri-state area of the Delaware Valley, with 20 to 30 percent of its customers estimated to come directly from inside the Keystone Industrial Port Complex. So that means there is heavy industry all over that site. And what that means is the last thing we need is more heavy industry over there. And that's exactly what Elcon intends to do. So with that, we'll come back to that if we have time, but just a brief overview of how we got here. Why did El Elcon choose this site? And you know, it's, it's for obvious financial reasons. It's, it is located in the middle of a heavily populated metro area where 10% of the United States population is within 100 miles of this site. There is basically an entire city on that island with rail, with, uh, rail yards and their own electrical grid. There's a giant, there's a pretty, pretty huge natural gas power plant as well over on that site. So it has the capacity to handle multiple heavy industry, which is even more reason for us to be concerned about what Elcon is intending. So it's a brief history about how we got here, but going forward, um, we have some real experts on Elcon here tonight. Um, and though there were some kind words said about myself, really, I, can, I am not an expert at this. We've got representatives from POWA, Lisa Baxter, who's here to say, uh, share her thoughts with you and, and her expertise, and Fred Stein from the Delaware River Network, Riverkeeper Network. And John from the Clean Air Council back there as well, who, who is also an expert in this field. So that's just a little bit of my, my local input, but let's hear from the experts tonight. And uh, here is Fred Stein. Thanks, John. Hello, everyone. So um, I wanted to piggyback on what John was saying. I had a couple of slides myself, and there's going to be a test at the end. So everyone should be taking notes as we go along. That's a little bit of a joke, but it is important but because what one of the jobs, and, and we'll go over some of our needs that we need, and probably many people in this room can help fulfill some of those needs, but everybody can talk, talk this up to their neighbors, to their friends, uh, and get more people involved, whether they come to another meeting, whether they come to a, a, a Falls Township or Pennsylvania, uh, Falls Township, Pennsylvania, or a Pen, uh, New Jersey uh, meeting. Uh, we need everyone out there with their voices talking about this issue, and we all can do that. 
So um, I wanted to take a step back. I'll, I'll, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what Elcon is and the process, the permitting process that we're in today, um, and then um, and then what are, what are some of our more specific needs that we're looking for for help. Um, Elcon is a chemical um, a chemical hazardous waste treatment and storage facility. Um, and, and here I'm going to I'm, I'm going to piggyback right on John's uh, John's slides. So this is you can see right here is John right right here is um, oh no right here I'll use it as a pointer right here is uh, 100 Dean Seavers Road, which is in as John said, is in the Keystone Industrial uh, Port. And the organizations that are formed to challenge Elcon siting their plant here, we're not against developing this site. It's in a heavily industrial area. It's got great tax rateables. It's near a lot of great transportation. We're just saying it's not the right kind of industry for this site, this location. And as the mayor said, 8 million people get their drinking water from the Delaware River. Here in Burlington County, I live in Camden County, Philadelphia, all of those communities draw their drinking water. So that's one of our big issues. It's not development of this site. It's, um, it's what they're proposing to do. Here we are. All right, see? Just had to warm it up. Go ahead. So this is just a close-up. Some of the, some of the top, oh, go back if you could. And I'm going to, I might jump around a little bit, but I want to take advantage of the information on each of these slides. Some of, some of our concerns uh, about this facility is, is its proximity to the Delaware River. But it's not just because it's less than a half a mile away. This is where the, this is where Elcon will build on this currently vacant land. But these are designated wetlands right here. This is all uh, standing water wetlands. And it's hydrologically connected. That means the Elcon hired a wetland expert. They went in and they figured out exactly where all the wetlands are and how is it connected with groundwater, with the, with the, with the Delaware River, et cetera. And in, the, in, their own, in their own report, these wetlands <laughs> are hydrologically connected to the Delaware River. That means that a spill, um, a spill on Elcon, either from transferring th those ch chemical hazardous wastes from the trucks to the storage and treatment facility, um, or, or any number of things, if it got into the wetlands, hydrologically, it's connected to the Delaware River. So that, that just makes it, that raises our concerns that much even more. Here we are. Okay, go ahead. So right uh, about in, in 2014, um, Elcon submitted their phase one permit application to Pennsylvania DEP. It's a multi-phase process. We're in phase two. Uh, but they, so they submitted their phase one um, permit to, to Pennsylvania DEP. These same organizations that are here now, uh, POWA and Clean Air Council and others, challenged that and we we had some initial victories we got that we got DEP to vote it down or to to decline that uh, phase one permit which was a great thing but really and, and all, all Elcon did was change things corrected corrected some of the uh, problems that we had pointed out which got DEP to deny their for first permit and and um, it's been I guess about a year now uh, Pennsylvania DEP approved their phase one permit application Today, they're going through the phase two application. The phase one was pretty superficial as far as what they had to present to DEP. There wasn't a lot of information. You know, are you in the 100-year floodplain? Are you going to impact a potential drinking water supply? Some real basic information. Phase two is much more involved. They're looking at quality of life issues. How will that facility affect real estate value? How will that facility there impact air quality, not only in Burlington County, but in, in, Pen in uh, Pennsylvania communities? A lot of different, more technical transportation issues, chemical processing issues, et cetera. And that's what DEP is looking at right now. It's a 10-month it's a ten ten process that started in uh, June, July, July. So it's a 10-month, DEP has 10 months to look at this information process it, 
come back to Elcon saying, we think that you made a mistake here, here, and here. We want you to correct it. But they have until the end of May um, in order to make their final decision. Within that period of time, there'll be a couple uh, public comment period where all of us will be able to come together, probably over in the Bucks County uh, Sheridan where, where um, we met before, and you'll be able to provide, stand up and express some of your concerns, your qu ask your questions. You'll be able to put that down in writing. And then that pro all of that information goes to DEP where they'll make a final determination. We think that we have uh, technical reasons why this should be denied. You know, but there's a lot of there's a lot of um, um, uh, different or different things going on. You know, there's some political actions going on, but we think we have the technical reasons why this should be denied. Like I said, it's 210,000 uh, tons of chemical hazardous waste will come into uh, Elcon every year. Uh, that's 17 to 25 tanker trucks will be coming into um, Elcon. Um, on a daily basis. Uh, one of our concerns is um, going, if, if you think that, because Elcon is proposing in their process, in their facility to have containment walls around the storage, uh, storage areas. You know, they're doing a lot of things to prevent pollution from happening. But you have 25 trucks on a daily basis coming to the river, coming to our drinking water supply. That's a big concern. Uh, the spills don't have to necessarily happen just on the Elcon facility. They can happen on the, at the intersections and the uh, highways on their way to Elcon. So again, not only is there 210,000 tons going to be treated here, and not only is there already uh, a lot of industry at Keystone, but they're bringing... Yes? Oh, it's 194? Okay. All right. It's good. Okay. But again, it's it it's bring it's bringing those bringing those uh, those um, tanker trucks to our drinking water supply, and um, many of those many of that contamination will have toxic materials in them. It's the, these are uh, chemicals from um, automotive shops from mining. Uh, not fracking, but for mining and a lot of other different uh, uh, industry and pharmaceuticals will be coming in in this chemical waste to be treated at, at Elcon. Good. One of the, one of the issues that, that raised our concern um, and made it, made it very clear to, to me and many others that Elcon is, is like a, a used car salesman. I hope there's no used car salesman here. But they're, they're trying to... They, they came in and, and they tried to convince Pennsylvania DEP and the community to relax, that their facility is over a mile from the Delaware River and that we're, you know, that we're just chicken little running around complaining that you know, we're, they're a threat to our drinking water supply. But what we pointed out and will continue to point out is the Biles Creek is right here and it's tidally influenced and they're less than a half a mile from the Biles Creek. And here's those wetlands, and the wetlands are, it's hydrologically connected to the Biles Creek. So this is right from Elcon's own PowerPoint presentation. Relax, we're, we're 6,200 feet from the river, but there's a tributary of the river within a half a mile, less than a half a mile. That's a repeat, thank you. This, this um, it's a little bit hard to, to, to see, but you can see this is an image of the Delaware River. These are all freshwater intakes along the Delaware River. And uh, Bur uh, a lot of Burlington County intakes are up here, um, but all, a lot of these, Lower Bucks, um, Bristol Borough brings their drinking water here. When we were going through the phase one, um, uh, Philadelphia is right here. Philadelphia's Baxter Street intake. This is the city of Philadelphia. Baxter brings in about 60% of their drinking water uh, for the city uh, through their Baxter, um, Baxter intake. The other 40% comes off the Schuylkill. But during the phase one process, during the phase one permit, uh, Philadelphia Water Department ran a, a computer model 
of what would, what, would, what would the impact be on their drinking water intake if there was a spill 25 miles up the river, up, in, up where Elcon is being, is being sited. And based on their conservative um, computer models, they felt that their drinking water supply would have to be shut down for almost four days if a, if a chemical spill occurred um, at Elcon. And that's a long ways away. That's that all that, that chemical would be get into the river and come down and with the tidal action it would go back and forth. Now this is you know a significant spill. I don't want to make it sound like it's just a drop, a couple of drops on the land. This would be a significant spill. But again, why put our drinking water supply in harm's way um, when there are, when there may be other better facility other sites than right alongside the river? Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. The, um, this image is from the uh, Burlington County uh, planning, uh, planning Department. This, is, this, this shows that the um, Elcon is, per, is, is in the 500-year floodplain. This is currently in the 500-year floodplain, and they'll build on the 500-year uh, floodplain, which they're legally allowed to do. Um, our concern, and we have, uh, we're, gather, we're, we're hiring an expert in this, to, uh, to take a look at how is climate change and sea level rise uh, going to impact the 500-year the, the, the flood, flood areas um, where, we once, where this once may have been high and dry. Uh, with the climate change, with, you know, we're seeing tornadoes and hurricanes coming through the, in the eastern United States much more severe than we ever thought. Is this designated 500-year floodplain safe enough for, you know, for any facility, but particularly where 100 and, what you say, 194,000 tons of chemicals are going to be brought in and treated and stored? Before we go on to this, that, um, I wanted to um, see if, uh, invite, Lise up and see if she wanted to share anything or may have Russ come in first. I'm going to speak after Russ. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Greg. Um, I want to first off say um, everyone here is so lucky to have such informed elected officials. Um, we would have a tough time doing this meeting in Fairless Hills, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, so that's a great thing. Um, so I just want to take a step back for a second, because in my mind, the purpose of these meetings is to explain this to you so you can explain it to your friends, because that's really how we're going to defeat this, particularly your friends in Pennsylvania, because um, I won't um, lie to you and say that you will probably have a tough time participating in Pennsylvania's public input process as a New Jersey resident. Um, this is really something for Pennsylvanians. Um, so just keep that in mind. So why does Elcon want to do this? Why do other people want to do this? Um, there's a lot of chemical activity. New Jersey, Eastern Pennsylvania. Um, and right now, the common practice is to take that wastewater that they generate, that wastewater that is 20% lead, mercury, cadmium, and deep well inject it in Missouri and Arkansas. Um, water is very heavy. It costs all these chemical companies a ton of money to truck all this water out to the middle of the country. So it'd be very convenient for them to um, treat it here. And let's even sort of unpack that word treatment because it sounds good. Sounds like they're doing something fancy to it that's going to make it disappear, and it's just basic physics that you can't do that. Um, you have this heavy metallic substance, and it's going to stay like that. So this is what they're called in the whole um, incinerator vocabulary debate. It's, it's technically a thermal oxidizer. Um, but if you break that down, all that means is heat machine, thermal oxidizer. Um, and specifically, 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit is what this is going to get up to. Um, and one thing that they truly have not disclosed is the emissions from 
burning so much natural gas to hit that number. Um, in their original application, they were talking about 25 tons of nitrogen oxide pollution, which what which is what becomes smog. Um, it's sort of the main pollutant that um, I like to work on in the sense of we can all understand those orange ozone days um, where you're not supposed to fill up your gas tank or exercise too much you see on the news. So that's what I'm really concerned about. Um, and unfortunately, Bucks County and surrounding areas are back on the rise for ozone days. Um, in 2018, Bucks, and I mean, you might as well have Bucks County's air. Air doesn't know that it's Bucks County and Burlington County. Um, so you had seven orange ozone days so far in 2018, the most since 2008. Um, so that's a 10 years where it kind of went down a bit, and it's back on the rise. Um, and I will tell you that I'm not sure that that's from the industrial activity. Um, a lot of it is from increased transportation. Um, and something that we've been talking about as a group, they don't factor in the pollution from transportation in these projects. It is not something that's permitted. It's not something that's regulated. Um, so let's think about that 17 to 25 truckloads, all the other truckloads that are existing in the, uh, the old U.S. steel compound. And then let's talk about the things leaving this facility. So they're not making this waste disappear. They're basically boiling this water and there is a major source of air pollution. But what's left is sludge and salt, both of which are loaded with heavy metals. Um, and I will tell you that this, this thermal oxidizer idea is so new for the area, there's not a landfill in Pennsylvania prepared to take the waste that Elcon will be generating. That's a really big deal for me. Um, we heard that from the Southeast DEP director, who is now, interestingly, the director of EPA Region 3. Um, we had a meeting with him years ago, and they, they told us they're not, nobody else is generating this waste. There's no one else to take it. So that idea that this is going away is just right out the window. All they're doing, that salt and that sludge, much lighter, much cheap, cheaper for them to go drive to Missouri or wherever. Um, so that's the need for it. And I want to totally dispense with the idea, because I remember when we first, um, when Elkhorn would actually show their face at community meetings like this and try to explain the project, um, they would talk about, oh, if you use nail polish or shampoo, you have to accept this waste. It's sort of part of your burden as a modern citizen. Um, but what they don't tell you is that this area takes the waste burden of the entire East Coast already. Um, Deputy Mayor was talking about some of the other industry in the area. Um, one of those industries is a contaminated soil incinerator. So something else that's full of heavy metals that they're just burning in the compound. Um, there's a municipal solid waste incinerator in the compound, um, the wheel abrader waste incinerator that gets violations all the time. Um, and that's another thing to think about this. Once this facility, if this facility is built and permitted, it's not really a big deal when they break regulations. They get a fine, it's a price of doing business. Um, so they're ready for that. That's built in to their budget. Um, so it's really, they, and they won't factor in any sort of risk assessment or what might happen. Um, Fred was talking about the effects of sea level rise and sort of the changing makeup of our weather. Um, and I would say another thing to add to that is we have less soil and more pavement, particularly in that area of Bucks County. So as we have more water, we have less places for that water to go. Um, and FEMA flood maps are just notoriously out of date. Um, it's something that I am working on separate from this campaign, um, and it's just not great 
Um, so any sort of these um, promises that industry will make, totally non-binding. This idea that, oh, 30% of our business is coming from the complex, that may be true, but that's not in permitting. Um, that's just them saying that. Um, so a lot of these promises are just that. Um, we talked about the waste responsibility. Um, oh, the um, if you want a really startling picture that I think just speaks to the opposition to this project, look up the hazardous waste incinerator in the Utah West Desert. Um, it's literally in the middle of the desert. Um, there are no homes. It is just this hazardous waste treatment facility. There is one railroad that goes in and out. Um, and this is a comparable facility. Um, and just like was mentioned earlier, this is purely a geographic tax situation. They're not, we don't use industry that utilizes water power anymore. Um, that's why U.S. Steel was there, because they used the river, um, and now we're just sort of left with everything. Um, and unfortunately, we have this hobby of keeping these contaminated areas as contaminated as possible. Um, and again, if you go to cleanair.org slash stop Elcon, um, as if you needed an, a, a, another website to go to, um, you can read the Philadelphia Water Department statement about this facility opposing it. You can look at um, Elcon's record of environmental noncompliance in Haifa Bay, Israel. Um, they were not a good citizen there. There you can see n news stories about um, disease clusters in the area, about Israel trying to move them around the area. Um, and just to talk about their other sort of international practices, um, they tried and failed to propose a facility in Italy um, where they were not wanted. Um, they tried in Lakewood, New Jersey years ago where they were not wanted. Um, and even within the state of Pennsylvania, they have kept and kept resubmitting this process to be rejected. Um, and honestly, they were, because I see a lot of industrial permitting um, in the city of Philadelphia and elsewhere, and these companies that do business in Pennsylvania, they sort of know the tricks, they kind of massage the system a little bit. Um, and Elcon is not doing that, which I hope works in our favor, um, but as of now, it's just kind of shown them to be incompetent in many respects. Um, one of those is that Bucks County fails for ozone pollution. Um, so when you fail for ozone pollution, a major source in your facility is classified as 25 tons of nitrogen oxides per year. Elcon will claim to be under that number and that they are not a major source. They just do not know the situation in Bucks County. They have not done their due diligence. Um, so I am confident that they will not be able to get under that 25 tons per year. Um, and hopefully, and that sort of major source, um, it starts something called new source review, which our uh, federal administration has been trying to unwind a little bit. Um, but that should allow us a greater opportunity for public comment, because that's what new source review is. You're putting a major source of pollution in an area that's already overburdened. Um, so I think that's one of the main things to communicate to your friends and neighbors, that this area is already suffering from air pollution, and there's just no reason to put another major source of smog in the area, particularly as um, dangerous smog days are already on the rise. There's physically no way they will go back down if we keep building new facilities like this. Um, you are in good hands. Um, if you um, sign up, we will keep you in the loop and make sure you know all about the public comment process. Um, PADEP is very familiar with um, Lise, Fred, and myself and people working on this. Um, to their credit, they have been transparent uh, about the public input process. 
Um, there's no excuse for us all not to be there. Um, and I will say that the like PADEP doesn't reject a lot of proposals. Um, and they've already rejected this several times, and they're aware of the heat that people are giving this project. Um, so I think there is a great, great chance that we can prevent this from being built. We've been working on a chemical waste facility in this area for five years, if not more, um, and it still has yet to be built, uh, which I think is a great sign. Um, Lise, do you wanna fill in the blanks here? Okay, I'm Lisa Baxter. Um, I'm part of um, a coalition. We call ourselves POWA, or Protect Our Water and Air. We're basically a coalition of residents, uh, not just from Falls Township, but from all the surrounding townships that will be affected by Alcon if they build. And anybody from this side of the river is welcome to join us also. And I think actually some of you already have. Uh, we are working closely with Bordentown and appreciate very much that you're taking initiative for this. And uh, we are also, um, I guess I'll fill you in a little bit on what we are doing. Um, we are kind of the boots on the ground. Uh, we are working with organizations like Fred's and Russ's and also other ones like Penn Environment and Clean Water Action. We are also working with legislators, um, uh, trying to think of anybody who can help us and who will have any kind of input or say so and uh, will be helpful in this regard. Uh, our biggest job is really to rally the troops and uh, try to get specifically false residents involved, and that's our trickiest part so far. Um, we've not had so much difficulty getting surrounding townships involved, but we're having a difficult time with falls. And I think there's a few reasons for that. Um, first of all, they are in, and that includes kind of all of us by default, um, in almost like a sacrificial zone at this point. Um, and I'm not gonna go over that again, but with all the heavy industry there, and a lot of it is uh, quite bad. Um, um, in, in addition to the four landfills and in the incinerator, and the incinerator is actually um, a, turn, a wool liberator, um, very, very high polluter. Um, but we're having a hard time rally the false, uh, rallying the false residents. I feel um, there's a mix of reasons for it. Um, I feel that like some of it is uh, apathy, but some of it's also that they've given up because they did fight the landfill, and it came in anyway. They did fight, fight wool liberator, and it came in anyway. And now there's another thing, and some of them feel like, well, what's the point? Um, so we have to convince them that it is worth it. And one of the things we feel in power is that if we let Elkhan come in, it's going to be the beginning of a slippery slope. They're going to be attracting other waste businesses. So although we're failing as air standards now, according to the EPA and the Lung Association, it will not get better. It will get worse if we let them in. Alcon is not a neutral uh, uh, company in terms of pollution. They will be polluting. Even if they have all the well, uh, bells and whistles, they will still be polluting in the air pollution. Um, and uh, uh, even if they're not discharging into the river, like everybody said here, the river is at, um, at risk. Uh, but the air pollution specifically, uh, which is you guys are downwind, so it affects you. Uh, I wouldn't say maybe not as much as somebody who lives right in Falls, but in terms of air, um, there are no barriers for the air and you are within very, very close proximity. Um, so one of the challenges is rallying the troops in, in Falls. And even though you're not in Falls and you might, your legislators might not be the ones that have you know, direct authority here, I feel that your legislators have input and can talk to the legislators in Falls and to journalists and to other people and help rallying the troops. And I thank you, um, all of you, um, for recognizing that this is a serious matter that we need to deal with um, and taking the time for it. Um, also, uh, feel that um, even though you're on this side of the river, you can help if you have friends in Falls, if you know anybody, or even come and help us when, we, when it's time for us to do petitions. That's one of the things we will be doing. Um, it doesn't matter if you're from Falls, if you're walking around with petitions, as long as you know the basics. We have our uh, information sheet over there. Let's see if I have one copy here somewhere. Uh, 
this one. Yeah, this one. Um, if you just familiarize yourself with what's on there uh, before walking around with petitions, that's really all you need to know. And you don't have to live in false to help us walk around with petitions. That's just one thing that we need help with. We have a list. Uh, so if you have any time at all, it doesn't even have to be a lot of time. It could be half an hour a week. It could be whatever amount of time you have if you're willing to contribute. Uh, there's a lot of things we need help with. A big one is social media. Um, and you also don't have to be in false to do that. So, so there's a lot of things you can do from here even if you don't live in false. Um, I think we have to put my glasses on here just make sure I'm covering different things. Yeah, one more thing. Um, if you take, if you draw a circle around uh, where the location, the proposed location for um, Alcon is, is supposed to be, if you do a three mile circle around there, according to EPA's own numbers, it's 50% uh, minority, 35% below the poverty line, which means it should be an environmental justice area, but it isn't uh, because of the way the census tracts are organized um, or drawn. Um, and also, in terms of the pollution, the fact that we're failing the air standards doesn't mean that Elkan can't move in. They can just get credits from Virginia or something like that. I mean, it really doesn't hold them back. Um, so those things, we have to fight against those things. The bigger trend here, I think, for us is not just... Sorry. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry? Circle. Can you repeat that? Uh, well, if you, yeah, if you draw a three-mile circle around... Uh, Alcon's proposed site. Uh, it's 50% um, minority, 35% below the poverty line. Accord this is according to the EPA. You can look it up on the EPA's website. Um, so it should be an environmental justice area, but it's not. Uh, let's see, what was I? Yeah. Um, what we are looking at, it's obviously Elcon, we feel is the key to stop Elcon because it's the start of a slippery slope. And like we're saying, you would, they would draw in other waste businesses. At the same time, they would also push away any, what we would consider good businesses, green businesses, anybody who would not want to be next to a hazardous waste processing facility. So that means that we're basically going to turn the area even more in a negative polluting direction. Um, now, the area in, um, in Falls Keystone Industrial Park is a heavy industrial zone, like we talked about. And it will stay that way unless somebody comes in and you know, has, makes major changes, which is not very likely anytime, so anytime soon. Uh, but that means we have to work with that, and they will be bringing businesses in. So we need to somehow help turn those businesses into green businesses and green jobs. And one, that's another thing we're fighting in false people. For some reason, have the perception that we're fighting against jobs, and we're really not at all. We just want those jobs to be green jobs, not be polluting jobs. Um, so that's a bigger part of the effort that we really need to help focus on, which is kind of hard sometimes for you know individual people to see. But there's things that we're starting to check into, like. Um, um, Developmental program, business developmental programs and things like that within the state of Pennsylvania. And I don't know, if, I mean, anybody on this side of the river can do research on those things too and then inform us or people who, other people who are working on it. Any kind of research like that would be helpful. I talked a little bit with the false supervisors themselves and they're reestablishing their, their economic development commission but try to get people to help with those things and um, help find people to help with those things. That would be helpful too. Um, let's see if there's anything else I need to bring up. Yeah, the minimum, bringing up the air standards to the national air, air, air standards. And the jobs plan, I think it's like 55 engineering jobs and 120 construction jobs for nine months. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. Sacrificing family and health and whatever else, drinking water. Mm -hmm. It's, it doesn't make any sense, but um, and we actually would love to talk to unions about this because I think in the long run it's not good for them either. There really isn't. So let's see. We, um, yeah, we have, in terms of signing up and helping us, we have these. They're over at the table there. They're sign up sheets. Now, they have individual lines, but if you, we're looking for people, I think you mentioned this, Fred, we're looking for people with special skills in addition. We, we, anybody who will help, we're very happy to have any, any kind of help. 
But if you have special skills, like chemical engineering skills and things like that, that's something we're looking for right now. Uh, we have formed, um, with some people from Bordentown, we are, have formed a chemical technical working group, we call it. Um, so we're basically going through this uh, application. It's six fat binders. The application is huge. And we are gradually working our way through it. Uh, but the, we need some uh, people who can help us with the process itself. So engineers or chemical engineers who are... Um, have, yeah, so are familiar with processes and have maybe have worked with, worked with organic compounds, that kind of people. So if you know anybody or somebody who knows some, somebody, that would be really helpful. That's something we're looking for right now. Um, and this is a group that um, you know, we're continuing uh, to work on this, and we probably will be for a little bit. Uh, what else? Uh, we're waiting for the comment period for the Department of Environmental Protection. Um, that's the period where the, every, when the letters you send will be on the record. Now, I don't think that has to be specifically from Pennsylvania residents, does it? No, yeah, I think that you, since you're going to be affected by it, even though you're from this side of the river, you can also send your letters. And when that period starts, we will inform, inform everybody um, and let you know. Um, and we will be on Facebook, on our website. Our website is stopalcon.com. It's on the bottom of the sign. Um, and also, um, we'll, we'll send out emails if you're on our mailing list. Uh, so we will let people know when that starts. And then we will yeah, collect letters and have, give people the address. And follow us on Facebook if you can, because we put it on there. Uh, so that's one thing we definitely need yeah, to write to DP. Uh, also, even though you're not in Falls, um, they don't listen as much to people who are outside of Falls for obvious reasons. But I think if they get inundated with letters from other places, they will notice. So if you, uh, if you go on the website, for this, just Google Falls Township, their website will come right up. And you look under government and then under supervisors, they have all the email addresses right there. And they also have a general mailing address. So writing them is definitely not going to hurt. And I think the more they you know, get people, even if you're not from false, it will certainly help. Um, and like I said, yeah, we will be working on petitions. We don't have the timing on that yet. So that might be, I think, maybe spring. I don't think, know if we're going to do that in the fall. Um, social media, definitely. We need, if you on your own Facebook in any way, if you follow any kind of like next door sites or anything like that, just talk about it. And you can use our fact sheet for talking points if you like. We try to update that. And by the way, the chemicals are now 268 chemicals they're going to do, not 596 anymore. But it's still a ton of chemicals. And they've added some that we're not very happy with. Um, signs is the other one. And we have a couple of versions. I don't know if you have the Bordentown version here. But uh, if you know anybody who lives on busy roads, preferably in Falls Township, but on this side too, but especially arterial roads, just if you, yeah, anything like that, try to help us get signs out just to create awareness. Um, and we're happy to deliver them if need be. We have on our website, we have listed uh, locations for picking up signs. Uh, but if you want to, you know, have a few people over here, I'm happy to drive over in my own car and deliver them because we just really want to get the signs out. Um, and also, I think the last thing, um, the fall supervisor meetings are once a month. They're every third Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Again, you can Google the website, but they're right at their public building. Um, you can speak there. You have to sign up to speak, and you're allowed to speak even if you're not from the township. And I don't think it hurts for them to hear that it's going to affect you over here. Um, and also, even if you don't want to speak, just come and show up with one of those buttons we have on the table, or even hold one of the signs on your lap while you're sitting there so people who are watching from home on TV will see it. Um, and Falls Township meetings, there tend to only be very few people who show up to the meetings. But I think if we keep on at least having a few people every meeting, they'll see it and, you know, be reminded. So, anything I forgot? I think um, personal <coughs> stories matter. So when you're talking to the Board of Supervisors or any sort of comment submission. Yeah, any letters are personal or handwritten or not form letters is helpful. We do have some form letters that we have that we can give people to and form emails, but yeah, anything that's not form is even better. Do you Absolutely. Do in Buck County, have family there, really like to go to a scenic spot on the Delaware, on the PA side, all that stuff matters. 
Yeah. But I think the bottom line is that if we work together and just tell anybody we know and spread the word, I think that's the key. So please sign up if you can. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't know. Are we doing questions? I wanted to make an appeal. He has more specifics on, um, on what kind of experts that we could use. Maybe some here in the audience. Maybe some yeah, I just want to emphasize, my name's Keith Onsdorf, and I live here in the city. And I'm co-chairing this chemical uh, technical task force that we've organized with Pala. And Dr. Jerry Nichols, who many of you may know, he's, a, I think, just about a lifelong resident here in the city. Uh, he has graciously offered to co-chair, and we had a meeting with a number of uh, technical experts earlier this evening in anticipation of this gathering tonight at Dr. Nichols' home. Uh, so there is a very much a active uh, uh, public participation component here, right here in the city, and we're striving to generate uh, not only comments during the public comment period down the road, but to try to get in with our voice uh, both at the uh, city level and at the uh, power level to, to uh, emphasize uh, the uh, uh, type of uh, concerns being raised uh, by the public uh, in, in both states as to the inappropriateness of this um, oxidation process uh, for these uh, type of chemicals that they're proposing to accept. And if we can get in early on and emphasize as an ally and a resource to the DEP uh, that this thing is headed down the wrong uh, direction uh, as opposed to waiting for an initial decision from them where there's kind of bureaucratic momentum. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to uh, say in a nutshell is we need to strike while the, iron hot, while the iron is hot, which is now. So we've had our initial organizational meeting. Uh, we're still striving to come up with additional expertise uh, with chemical, uh, chemical engineering uh, backgrounds. And uh, we're going to be holding meetings here right in the city, so it's not something where anyone would have to travel over to Falls Township. Uh, we're definitely located full-time right here in the city of Bordentown. If anyone wishes to participate with us, we're more than happy to uh, have your participation. Thank you. They proposed it in Lakewood originally, like a while yes. ago. Out of Lakewood, the township, they said, or the DEP and the state of Jersey, what eventually stopped that? We don't know exactly because it's kind of sealed. We've been trying to find out. So, um, but, but basically, the the township, there, was consens the there was consensus within the, the, the council there that they thought it, it was it's, it's a predominantly Jewish community. And so I think they felt they had a friendly, in a Jewish company, coming to a Jewish community, I think they had, they thought they had it in there. But when, I think when they really realized what the facility represented with the community, they basically banded together and they created a, was it an ordinance or? They or passed a, an ordinance. It was an ordinance, they passed an ordinance uh, on the council, which basically prevented it from happening. And that, right. and that was down on the right. The very acidic Jewish community does bind together, like very, very, once the leaders start saying things, and once everybody gets on board, once they they that way. big opposition, they'll stop, but or can it, does the DEP or the township or the state or the county finally say, we don't really care what the, the residents say. We're going to make the final decision, or does the township actually have the final say? In this case, it was the ordinance they passed, okay. and that ordinance was such that there was no way outcomes getting in. So then so. does Falls Township, they're council or committee, did they actually not carry the way the actual committee, or are they like, is that kind of what's happening, is the, not just the residents, but the actual government over there, the township, do well, they have they a say? They have the authority to stop this. Can they, they do that? Oh, they yeah. do, okay. So I didn't know if it's like their DEP would open the I didn't know how it works. There are two authorities, it's the DEP and Falls Township. Oh, they, just, they, so have, they have those they yeah, the And it's very rare if they if they stop it themselves, it's very rare that the state will uh, overturn it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. but so there's a lot of history here. Yeah. Um, can you can everybody hear me? Yeah. No. There's a lot of history in, in Falls Township. Um, 
They have been sued before. They're saying they're afraid of being sued, which we don't actually think is an issue. Uh, but that's one of the arguments. The other one, like I mentioned before, is the jobs, uh, unions and the jobs and the perception of us taking away jobs, even though it's not really a real thing. That's the way it's being perceived. And a lot of people in general, including, we believe, the supervisors, a couple of them are union members also. Um, and we, have, we don't think it really shouldn't be an issue, but for some reason it's a perceived issue. Uh, so. Do they get money back? I know that they get money back from landfill. The, the, the well, for landfill, it's a hosting fee. We don't know actually exactly exactly what they're going to get from Elcon. There could be some kind of deal made, but um, we don't know um, what the specifics are there. Um, the application talks about $150,000 in fees. I don't know if that's a one-time thing or what it is, but the application does mention $150,000 in one part of the application related to... Why can't you find out if that, in fact, makes a difference to the people in Paul Sound? Because they're the ones that... Well, no, but... Yeah, but somebody has to ask them. Like, but I'm sure that Falls Township, when it comes before them, it will be an issue and they'll be asking people to speak up and so on. But we're trying to get to them so they're knowledgeable before that point. And, yeah. and also, the, another issue here is uh, if this goes through, um, and if Elcon has all the bells and whistles, that, and some people say, oh, if it has all the bells and whistles, it's only going to be minor air pollution. Um, even if that were the fact, which we don't believe, but even if that were the case, um, the Pennsylvania DEP does not have enough resources. They don't have enough people or enough funding to monitor and stay up to, on top of things. So that's another issue too, because if something goes down, and we've actually the who was it? Russ mentioned the Clean Earth, which is the facility that has the um, um, petroleum con con petroleum contaminated soil facility. They bring in, bring in 100 trucks a day of petroleum contaminated soil. Most of that is used for 12-inch top on top of the landfill every day. But one of the things um, with them, they were telling us that the DP will give them a heads up before they're coming. So you, you can expect one thing, just to answer your question about money. You can bet, you can just take it to the bank that Falls Township is gonna get a windfall that like you've yeah, probably sure never seen before. Yeah. And it's not gonna be $150,000. It's gonna be a significant amount of money. That's gonna be the challenge. How are you gonna, do, how are you gonna get, a, get, a, get around that? Right. I wanted to ask you, just recently I saw somewhere that the short nose surgeon got um, EPA um, contagious species status. Like, got listed? Like, yeah, got listed. And uh, the Atlantic surgeon is also endangered in New Jersey. So New Jersey has them both endangered. The federal has one of them endangered. I believe it's the short nose. But one of the breeding spots in the Delaware River for a unique species, what I read somewhere, is right here in southern Bordentown, right off the New Bold Island area. So in a risk assessment, wouldn't this endangered species be part of it? That's 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 an excellent point. And in the in the um, the permit application, there are those kinds of studies. Uh, and and like Lisa was saying, there it's a, there's a lot of information. Just there's you know it's 1,500 pages just in the vi the first volume. And so, but there are those studies. And you don't have to be a scientist. You don't have to be an engineer to read this and to say, wait a minute, I can look at a map. It looks like there's sturgeon habitat here, that should be a question that we explore and, and look at. And so that's another way that anyone in this room can, can help us look at. One, another thing is, and not to jump, but, but thank you for that, I'll piggyback. The, the Elcon is, is, is relying on one trucking company to handle all the, all the chemicals coming into their facility. We had asked, how, what, how are you not going to take uh, alternate routes that are quicker to the Elcon facility and they said we'll guarantee that the trucks coming in will only go on one route because we're only going to contract with run one trucking company that will allegedly be bringing chemical waste from 10 different states and that trucking and 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 that yeah and that and that trucking company is in South Jersey you can look at it, it states right in the um, in the permit what the name of the company is and where it's at so Anyone could take a look at Google Earth and zoom in on this. Take a look, go for a Sunday afternoon drive, go down and see if this company is the kind of company that could handle that kind of volume. Anything that we can do to 
at, you know, help formulate more questions uh, and, and concerns that we can express that and, and we can start doing that. Um, you know, you can do that. All this, this entire permit is on DEP's website. If you go to uh, Pennsylvania DEP Southeast Regional Office, you'll go, you can follow the drop down menus. Uh, to that point, um, a question that I have, what happens when a truck comes in? They're going to have to test the waste at the driveway of the facility to make sure that it's what Elkhan is permitted to take and it's what everyone says it is. If it isn't, they just turn that truck away and then you have a driver in the area with no place to go and a tanker full of hazardous waste. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. In my early comments, I mentioned the word consortium. Again, I haven't heard, but has there efforts been made to approach towns, counties, both states to get involved? In other words, pool our resources. Again, when we look at this, and I hate to be the realist in this, but when we look at this, what happens, legal action on our part usually does the trick or can do the trick. So I asked the question, has anybody reached out to start organizing different towns? And the other part to this, I'm sure you've had connection with both governors. If not, why not? I mean, you know, we're looking to defeat this. And again, we have the same problem. We have, we have the pipeline and compressor. And the only thing that really, really works in this case, we're still fighting the legal battles. Right? And, and that, with enough resources, may be able to defeat them, meaning Elcon. But again, I, 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 I beg you, really, at this point, everybody to get involved. And, and so we have a united front. Governments, governments taking the lead, government agencies, towns, counties, our two governors. If I could jump in, I, I know that, and I know that uh, we've gotten resolutions, municipal resolutions from uh, many, uh, like 14 different com communities. And, and so what we should do is, is talk to you and, and change tact and not only just get a resolution, which it can be valuable, can be some, but it doesn't really, it, it may not stop the, the, the train from moving forward, but, but, but an appeal. Okay. So, so maybe we reach out to those same municipalities and more, appealing to their joining a, a coalition of municipalities and, and counties. There's got to be a lead. That's what I'm saying. In, in, in small towns like Bordentown City or Bordentown Township, that's not the lead in this case. That's not the lead. Again, you've got Philadelphia involved in this. You've got Trenton. Uh, you've got several counties involved. And you've got two governors. At this point, do we know from the Florida State because we knew he was very involved early on and had talked about committing resources to a small firm in terms of being involved in this fight. I've not heard anything about that lately, but he was very involved early on. He was involved in the small firm. No, I don't, I, but I don't know where that stands. I don't know whether. I, I don't know where that stands either, but the point is this, this is something that's starting to move again. We've got, to, we've got to take some action. Right. Well, I was saying that's one path to at least reinvestigate because they were talking about possibly doing some work. I don't know if that was pro bono or what it was. Some of it, I think, may have been pro bono. Okay. Right. Yeah. To answer your question, we have not organized any towns. We, we, have, we have been doing resolutions, and we're actually doing some additional work to that. Uh, we are hope we are primarily working on rallying uh, Falls Township and around there to build that up. We don't have the capacity to do everything. Uh, if somebody would like to take that on, that'd be fantastic. Uh, if, if, but uh, uh, um, Falls Township is the, one of the deciding authorities, and so that's what we have focused on: rallying the people. We are, we are a coalition of residents, uh, and we, are we have an environmental lawyer, and that's uh, what he says is the way to go. But I agree, with, I, do, I agree with you that that would be fantastic if, if someone could do that. We just don't have the capacity to do all of that. From the governor from that state? Yeah, we talked to our governor, we talked to We haven't talked to Well, actually, no, we, no, I take that back. Yeah, what? Somebody is talking to Phil Murphy, too. 
Uh, she's not here tonight. But uh, we, we have talked to Wolf. And uh, Wolf and we, uh, Josh Shapiro and so on. Just to um, piggyback on that point, um, in, in 2016, um, our legislators here in New Jersey District 7, they proposed legislation. Um, the assembly bill was Resolution 175, which made it out of the subcommittee. And the Senate bill was Resolution 80, which also made it out of the subcommittee, voted unanimously in favor of a resolution at the state level to oppose Elcon. Those bills never made it to vote in the, in, for the General Assembly. So at this point, I would like to request that our legislators, like they did in 2016, to again revisit this resolution, these two resolutions in the Senate and in the, in the Assembly, back to the subcommittee. It's a new legislative session. It's a new governor. So let's bring these bills back to the floor of the State House and actually get a vote at the state level. So, um, yeah. Citizen Malone. Morgantown and Morgantown Township have been through a lot of environmental battles, and we've been very victorious, whether it was starting the closing of Fairless Steel with a federal lawsuit, or if it was uh, the hazardous waste facility that we're going to put across from the high school, we've been very successful. The information is great. I appreciate it all. But I would seriously urge that the leadership of the city and the township and, and, the, and the group that was put together sit down and strategize as to exactly how you're going to move forward. This is all nice, people getting involved and writing letters and stuff, but it's going to take a serious effort to legally look at this thing and to move forward because if you don't, if you don't have your strategy ahead of them, you're going to, you're going to lose. And as far as the resolutions, having 18 years in the assembly, the resolutions mean nothing, John. What you need to get is a bill put in by Troy and by her actually allocating funds from the state of New Jersey to help fight this back. And that's really not the resolution saying we oppose it, because that's IWAC. That is not substantive. So get a hold of Troy, get a hold of her, ask them to put a bill in authorizing funds so that you can have an effective defense against something that is probably the most horrible. This is, in, in the area wide, this is probably the most serious thing that's ever happened. It's, it's, it, the school situation was terrifying for those high school kids. This is terrifying for a large area. And I would urge that the, 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 the governing bodies of both towns form a, a committee with each other committing resources along with a committee that's been formed to look at it from a citizen standpoint and start to put forth, because if you don't do it now, if they're halfway through the second phase, by the time you, you get yourself mobilized and ready, they're going to be into the third phase. Because Ziggy and I went to a meeting over there when they first started this, and it was a joke. The, the fix was in. I'm telling you right now, unless you do something very strenuous and very effectively, the fix is in. These people are going to let it go, go pick through. People in Falls Township, they, they see green, green in front of them. They don't care. They, if they have kids with two heads or frogs with six heads, they don't care. They look at the dollar bills involved in this. So I would That's urge yeah. that maybe the city and the township form a, a, a very strategic, very pointed group to move forward, get the resources of whether it's the river keepers or whatever other groups are involved and, and coalesce into a very strong committee, go as, as the mayors and, and committees from the city and township over to Falls Township and confront them as governing bodies, not as individuals. As a governing body, go and stand up and confront them for the horror that they're going to put on to the residents of this entire area. So I would just strongly urge that you get that, Jim and, and, and uh, Thank you. The township and the city are one when it comes to this. All right? We're one. But, but again, what Joe said is the same thing that I said before. We're both on the same wavelength. Period. Again, we're looking, again, to form a coalition of our own, maybe. But again, that's just the start. 
Again, I, I said what I said. We do have to get everybody involved. We have to have the resources, and that means money legally to fight this. And I, th I think all of us should be realistic about that, and that's all. So when, when Bristol Borough was proposing uh, an incinerator a couple of years ago, there was a, 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 a municipal meeting with Governor Flora was here, but he was a, probably a paid consultant, but township and borough were there and others. Is that what you're talking about? Like get together a strategy uh, meeting I, there? I, I was, my own personal opinion, having been through this several times and actually being very victorious, let, let, let the city and township formulate in their own mind how they want to approach this. You can be part of that. Just don't go spinning off and going crazy. You better have a good idea of what you can do, what kind of resources you can commit to it. And then, you know, I, I know, I, I, I've known Governor Florio and I know all, you, you need somebody who's going to be effectively doing this. And, and I would urge that the township and the city sit down with whoever else is in, they want to have involved and come up with a strategy. Not just talk about it. The information you gave is horrifying. But you need to have a strategy on how you're going to win. Not just tell people what the, what the outcome is going to be to them. You need a strategy to win. And you have to start figuring that strategy now. Thank you for that. And I think starting with the city and township is a, is a great first step and, is, and working with the 14 other uh, municipalities, as well as Mercer and Burlington counties, they also passed resolutions opposing this. So um, everyone is in favor of opposing this. So you're right, formulating something formal with monetary support, that's really the only way to go about it. So any other questions for the panel? Um, it was mentioned that Phyllis Township uh, was concerned because they had already been sued once before. Do you know what that was for? Which management? Which management? And did they yeah. lose? Yes. Yeah. Oh, big time. One waste management. One so department. what if we just had a class action lawsuit with all of the river towns? Why can't we just sue Get them? All the towns together. I'll tell you what the big problem with <laughs> that is. If you're doing a class action, the facility has to be there and polluted. Okay, so what Any, can we do before? What can we do now? Participate legally? in the public comment. I mean, you can't sue them for something that isn't there. No, the Falls Township. But wasn't there, I think there was a suit recently where there was a settlement for the smell, it was for Florence, yeah, for and there was Florence. a settlement, and that's, each, that's the problem. Yeah, Florence. each family got $70 or something like that. Yeah. It was yeah. totally ridiculous. They got, they got yeah. like a couple million dollars yeah, or something. But it it so shut Florence down true. for a little bit. That's what right. you said earlier, the money's there, they have the money to pay these fines. We know that, but, but like Assemblyman Malone said, we're prepared to, to do something and unite and get something going. And, and this gentleman right here, along with Dr. Nichols, they, they're ahead of this curve a little bit on the subcommittee that we have planned. So he can, yeah, I he just want to respond in, in terms of the strategy, uh, Joe. So we're we're um, going to be very active in this. We're endeavoring not to write letters of opposition raising concerns for public safety. What our, our working group is intending on doing is getting enough data to show that were the permit to be approved on the basis of these incompatible wastes that aren't susceptible to heat treatment, heavy metals and organics don't get detoxified by the application of heat. So our effort is to submit questions and comments at this early stage that will show them that were they to permit this facility, it would be illegal, it would be a violation of the applicable standards that govern the permitting of hazardous waste treatment facilities, such that were they to issue the permit, then a legal lawsuit would be timely to bar that permit from being executed and implemented. But unless you submit the comments beforehand, you have not exhausted your administrative remedies, and therefore you're barred from filing the lawsuit later on. So we do basically have a strategy that we're working on to put the DEP in Pennsylvania on notice that we think that these, how many waste streams are we talking about here, 230 or some such, are totally beyond the bounds of what this facility is designed to treat. And therefore, it would be illegal for them to go forward. So I'm not saying you don't need the town and the, and the regional governments to sign on to when we submit these comments. In fact, that's why the town and the city asked us to work on this. But we do have a strategy. It's not just sending in letters of opposition. 
I think everybody should understand that. You got nonprofits here that are you know digging in and they rely on contributions to fund. And Keith's a volunteer. Lisa's yeah. a volunteer. So everybody's eager to see a reward for their efforts. And I think the strategy aspect that Keith has just described is the first step. How do we support it? Give a donation to the Riverkeeper, give a donation to a fund that we start to hire uh, an attorney of record that can go over and submit uh, on your behalf? I, I don't know. I don't have the answers, but I think that's a start. Um, we're happy to work with whomever wants to do that. I, I have, um, we have connections in the townships that where we have passed the resolutions, and part of the resolutions we passed was that they had to write a letter to Falls Township and to the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Um, and we're also planning to go back to those specific townships and ask them for more. Uh, but um, we have connections in those townships if you would like us to connect them to you. Part of, some of them now have had turned over because it's been a while. The process, you know, it's just been going on for four and a half years now. And what? as a subcommittee so, meets, and then we're gonna have public uh, participation in a second. We are part of that. Yeah, so yeah. When, when we meet here, we'll probably be here or wherever, place of convenience. And, and again, this is something, the reason why Mayor Malone did this back when he was mayor, because he saw the foresight to, to do this, to get this thing rolling, and I'm, I'm supporting that effort as well okay. with, with this subcommittee. And they're very, your guys are very intelligent. These guys really are they're just like you. I mean, you guys are intelligent, and you're both your fields, and your, your talk tonight was very good. I, I, I think I appreciate that. But uh, we just got to prep up, and I think that's what Joe's trying to tell us. We, we got to get ready. We yeah. get ready. But I think that's separate from what you were talking about. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's additional strategy, which is great. But I think it's a separate, like what we're doing in the. It's like an all hands on deck. Yeah, what we're doing in the chemical working group is right. focusing on comments to the right. DEP. It's all, it's all so that's kind of the narrow there. And then we're doing on the rallying to, the, to faults, which is important too. And then this would be separate from that, but it's also important. I think it's a very good idea. So thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Question. Like, obviously, it's going to take some money to get things rolling. You said for like lawyers and whatnot. How about like would a GoFundMe thing kind of work out? Like, can you get a GoFundMe where that people donate money for that? Or I don't know. I don't know. You got to be careful with that. We're not at that stage yet. Okay. Like if we do, well, I think we in the right direction. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because I think that's one of the big things I've noticed with a lot of this stuff is everyone, you know, we all have suggestions of getting people involved, but we all have to tap our contacts. Like, you, I mean, you guys probably have a lot more contacts legally up and down the river, and like, we just need those names, we need those email addresses, like, we need to start flooding these people's mailboxes with concerns, you know, because at some point, coming from one person, it's not going to matter. For Hi, uh, my name is Gina. I'm actually from Assemblyman Conaway's office. Mitchell from our office is also here in the front. Uh, to really you know, Assemblyman Conaway is more than willing to reintroduce the assembly resolution um, that was introduced in 2016. Um, and I'm sure we can speak to Senator Singleton's office tonight. I don't see why they would be interested as well in, in, in picking that up in the Senate. So it is a start, but I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah. So that would be oh, resolution. I thought we mentioned a bill too. Yeah, I, I, Joe, money, money. money. <laughs> Resolutions are great. It's a bill. Just like you need something yeah. behind it, and money talks. Mm -hmm. And I would strongly urge to talk to to the assembly people and the senator about doing a bill that allocates some funding to fight this. That's really where it should be. A resolution. You can throw it in a circular file. I did a lot of them just for eyewash. I'm telling you, they're eyewash. You need some substance to move forward. And I, I appreciate her, but I've known her for 40 years. Uh, Troy, I love the debt, but you need something serious. Can we use your contacts to get them to give us money? Uh, I'll talk to them. I'll talk to them. <laughs> You're playing the best in talk to Counts. Just like you asked the question about the compressor, the thing that counts is the, is the legal action you take. All right? That's what really counts in this case. So it sounds like two positive, two positive actions are going to be leaving this room tonight. Is one, the technical, the technical advisory board, I know that's not the right term, but the technical board will continue to gather information. Uh, and then the township and the borough will meet uh, with other municipalities and some the nonprofits here tonight, and we'll start strategizing on the legal approach. And then third would be perhaps reaching out to the um, assembly and, and, and senator on um, a bill versus just a resolution. And a fourth one. Yeah, hopefully some people get involved here on the ground too to get the false residents involved. Right. Yeah. Just always remember. Public officials respond to public pressure. So it's up to all the residents out there to really let your officials know that this is important to you. So that's that is a key to always public officials. So if you haven't put your email address over on one of those lists, please do so on your way out. And when you get information from the township or the borough or, or one of our organizations, spread that information to more people. All right, and, and again, more voices will be uh, um, more powerful. All right, well, thank you all for coming out tonight. There's a lot of information that we can take away. Thank you to Fred and Elise and Russell. Thank you to our